On this edition of Ladies Talking Timber Sleds, we're gonna go over some of the accessories that we use on our snow bikes, as well as some of the modifications that we've made um, to turn our dirt bikes into snow-worthy machines. Um, we're also gonna go over some um, accessory items that just generally make the time on the bike a little bit more comfortable. Um, we're all gonna focus on something a little bit different. So Mel's gonna talk about some of the electrical modifications she's made to her dirt bike. Um, Shelly's gonna talk a little bit about um, hand comfort and some handlebar stuff, as well as um, different storage options for packing items on your bike or on your track. Um, Victoria is gonna address some of the changes she had to make to her two-stroke to convert it to a snow bike. And then I'm gonna talk a little bit about touch points and um, things like grips, uh, seats and foot pegs. So um, I know that the season is kind of tapering down in some areas, but I know that we're all already thinking about what we're going to run next year for a track or a bike, how we're going to modify things, how we're going to do things differently, how we're going to do you know things the same that we liked. Um, so I hope that this, this video gives you guys a little bit of insight into what we've done to our machines to make them more comfortable and more versatile and more functional in the snow. All right, so what do I mean by touch points? Touch points are places that our bodies come in contact with the bike itself. So the three main places that you have a touch point on your motorcycle or your snow bike are on your grips, your seat, and your foot pegs. And um, I've found that um, different things work better on snow bikes than perhaps on, um, on a regular dirt bike. And there's also now some options for snow bike specific parts to make these more comfortable or more functional. So let's talk about snow bike specific pegs. So this is a snow bike specific peg available by uh, Selkirk Snow Bike. And you'll notice that there is no center bar in this peg like a standard dirt bike. Um, what this allows for is more snow to actually pass through the peg and not pack up and ice up under your feet. Um, so if you compare it to a standard dirt bike peg one, you can see that it's actually much bigger because snow bike boots actually do have a little bit bulkier profile and it's also more open. It doesn't have that center bar. So it's got a bigger platform and it's more open to pass more snow through freely. So grips. Um, I also run heated bars like some of the other girls and one of the things I have found is I actually like a smooth um, profile grip when I'm on my snow bike and there's a couple reasons for this. One, the heat transfer through the grip is actually more effective in a thinner compound grip. Um, the other thing though is if you compare this to a thicker waffle grip that has deep grooves, one of the things I found is that if you drop the bike in the snow and pick it back up and snow is packed into that grip in that waffle pattern, um, if you're running heated bars, it almost immediately melts and then you end up with um, really wet gloves that are then drying out. So I like a nice smooth grip. I prefer the ODI Ruffian. Um, and I found um, that this sheds snow and water really nicely. So one of the things I hear pretty regularly when people are getting involved in snow biking is how uncomfortable the seat was. Um, so the problem with a stock dirt bike seat is that those have not been designed with um, one, the cold temperature in mind, and two, they're not necessarily waterproof or water impervious. So I actually run a snow bike specific seat from Seat Concepts called the Element. So this element seat, um, I have, mine is a little funny because I'm really short, so I run their extra short height seat. Um, they make standard tall and short seats in most of their models. Um, so the reason this is so great for snow biking is, is that all of the seams in the cover of this seat are actually seam sealed. And then there's a water impervious membrane between the cover and the foam layer. So the foam is completely encased in this waterproof membrane so that the seat can't absorb moisture. Um, so when the seat absorbs moisture in really cold conditions, that actually starts to freeze and creates like a really hard surface that you're sitting on. Um, so that's one of the reasons that people find standard dirt bike seats so uncomfortable. Um, so this is one of the modifications that I made immediately when I first started snow biking and I was really happy because it made for a much more comfortable day. Hi, Shelly Balls here. Uh, we're just going to talk about timber sled setup. So I have an Aero Air Pro on the front end just to get it up a little bit. I have a lot of accessory bags, so the timber sled number plate back for storage. So I put some light items up here so it doesn't kind of tilt that front end down so I can ride a little bit better. 
So I put like my snacks in here and some gloves, extra hat, anything like that in the front pocket here. And then I also have a timber sled suffering bag. This is where I put my extra tools, my water bottle, those heavier items that I want to carry um, that don't need to be on my back. And then I also have a timber sled gas can and the mounting kit for it and it's super slick. I love mine. Um, and then I have my engine jackets. So Drifter Products engine jackets. These are really nice. Keeps your temps up. And then I also have heated handlebars. So I'm kind of a wimp when it comes to my fingers. I have poor circulation. So the heated handlebars work great. That thermostat um, is right here. And then I also have some gauntlet, timber sled gauntlet covers. And this is the ticket for warm hands, heated handlebars, gauntlet covers. I'm like in heaven when I go riding every time. Um, and then just some simple clamps for tie down and that's about it. That's about all the mods I have. I have the Aero 3 timber sled kit on my solid strut um, bike here and it's a FC 450 Husqvarna and it's been a really fun ride to try out this season. Bye. Hey, I'm Melissa Maria and I wanted to go over my bike setup with you guys today. So I have a KTM 450 SXF and the Timbersled Riot LES kit. First year I rode, I had a standard lithium ion battery in there and it died all the time and had issues starting. So without the Kickstarter on the 2017 KTM um, with the e-start, I changed it to a gel battery. I've never had issues starting it, but I also upgraded to a larger stator um, this, that's just essentially for the light that I added. I, I don't really love riding at night because it's a little bit more dangerous not being able to see the Abbey train and all of that, but just in case it gets dark riding out or something, I've got that. Um, and then also with the, uh, with the battery, I connected a lead coming out here. And so on a KTM, your airbox panel just pops right off. And then I've got the little... Uh, lead coming out so I can easily jump start the bike if I ever need to. Um, I haven't needed to yet this season so that's really nice. The gel battery and larger stator has been working great for me but got that there just in case of emergency and then I've got the timber sled tunnel bag here. So in the tunnel bag this is really nice. It takes a lot of the weight out of my avalanche bag and off of my back so that's great. Um, I don't keep anything that I want on me in here so Shovel, beacon probe, obviously I keep on my body, but the stuff that I keep in here is the jump pack, like I said, and then I've got a timber sled tow kit. We've broken down a couple times in the back country and had to tow people out, so that's really nice. And then I've also got the timber sled tool kit. So the tools would be heavy on my back. I like having them in the bag. Um, another game changer for me is the wheel kit. I could not move my bike on my own without this wheel kit. So it connects to your front spindle on your ski, pops on and off really easily. It's got a little gimbal, so it'll lean with you as you move the bike around. And then it comes with back wheels as well. Um, so if I'm in the snow, I'll use the bike and run it with the wheels to move it around. And then if, if I'm on dry, you know, cement or whatever, I'll put the wheels on there. Hello, hello, Victoria here in my garage gonna talk to you guys a little bit about some mods that I've made to my uh, TE 300 two-stroke to make it ride better in the snow. So let's do it. Woo! All right, so first things first, I have a 2016 Husqvarna TE 300 and I've got an Aero 120 track on it with the front ski. Uh, so as far as two-strokes go, I run a electron carb system in there. It's a smart carb that allows for temperature and elevation changes so that the bike runs properly at high altitude. So in order to run that, I've also got the PST Snow Bikes uh, carb heater. That keeps my carb from freezing and sticking so that the bike runs well and yeah, I've definitely uh, rode my Electron without a carb heater and my bike froze and that was, we had to tow it out. So that was a bummer. Uh, I have an aftermarket air intake, which replaces a regular air filter that would otherwise get clogged with snow or freeze. So that's what that looks like. Um, I run a Thermobob. I run a Trail Tech uh, thermostat temp gauge. And 
and that's that right there. Um, I have a softer seat just because I'm a little bit of a princess. Um, it's also lower, which is nice for my height. I have a Cherubius skid plate on there to just kind of hold it all together in case I hit a log or something. Um, yeah, I mean, one of the main mods too for snow to dirt is stiffer, stiffer suspension. So stiffer front forks, um, just because I'm a small person. So for dirt, I need a very soft suspension and for snow, it helps to have that all nice and tight. And yep, there she is. I also have a wrap. This is by Moto FX Graphics, or you may know them as Arctic FX Graphics. Uh, they make snowmobile wraps too. And of course, Atribius Plastics and Atribius Handguards. All right, guys, have a good one.